All right, adding and subtracting polynomials. So first thing, we need some vocab here. Um, all right, a monomial. Monomial is a number. Um, here, let's write it out. A number uh, could be a variable. Uh, or could be the product of a number and one or more um, variables as long as they have uh, with let's say with whole number exponents. And some examples down here. So um, a monomial. Six is a monomial. Uh, seven X is a monomial. It's a, it's a number with a variable. It's a product of one. It has a whole number exponent of one. One third. It's a number. It has a variable. It's a product of got multiplication in between. Third power, first power, you're multiplying, you got multiple variables there, we're okay. Negative 4.7, you can have a negative, it could be um, a decimal, uh, a to the fifth, all that works out, okay? Um, things that are not a monomial, x plus, or six plus x, cannot have an addition sign, cannot be a sum. Three divided by x, cannot, I think that's supposed to be a t there, not canon, cannot have a variable in the denominator, okay? Five to the power of x cannot have a variable in the exponent. X can't be in the exponent. Can't have a negative um, um, exponent. The variable must have a whole number value, otherwise your variable ends up in the denominator again, okay? A degree of a monomial. A degree is the sum Some of the exponents. Sorry, I'm getting very messy here. Okay, try to clean this up. The sum of the exponents. What's sad though is some of you may not recognize that I cleaned up um, because my writing's kind of messy. Some of the exponents of the uh, variables. Exponents on numbers don't count here. Okay, only on the variables. So for instance, um, there aren't any variables in this six, so the degree is zero. Uh, we have an x. x it's, if you don't see an uh, exponent, it means it's to the first, so that's a degree one. Um, we have a third degree and a first degree, so three plus one is four, it's a fourth degree. Uh, we have a fifth degree, so it's five. All right, so that kind of help us out here, and now we can go on. Uh, let's practice. Find the degree of each monomial. So I hope you'll pause it and try it on your own. Okay, well, here I go. I'm going to look at the variables only, look at the powers, so it's squared. So another way of saying second degree is squared, so it's degree 2. Now we have a 5 and a 4 there, so that's 5 plus 4, or degree 9. We have a first, we have a third, and we have a second. So it's 1 plus 3 plus 2, which is also 6. We don't have any variable, so it's degree 0. And then we have a first degree. Remember, the numbers don't matter here, only the variables and their powers. All right. So let's go on to a little more vol uh, vocab here. Classifying polynomials. A polynomial is a, well, it's a monomial. And poly meaning many. A polynomial is made up of many monomials, or it could just be one monomial, uh, or the sum of monomials. Okay. So a polynomial. Notice this is a polynomial here. Here's a monomial. Here's another monomial. Here's a third monomial, a fourth monomial, and a fifth monomial. Those five monomials make up this polynomial. Okay. It's a sum of five monomials. Same thing here. One, two, three, four monomials. Those four monomials make up this polynomial. Those three monomials make up this polynomial. Those two make up this polynomial. And this one makes up that polynomial. 
So it could just be one monomial, it could be the sum of multiple monomials. Each monomial is what we call a term. So this monomial has one term, or this polynomial has one term. This polynomial has two terms. This one has three terms. This one has four terms. And this one has five terms. Okay, now we classify polynomials by the number of terms. Okay, so one a polynomial with two terms we call a binomial. So this is a binomial because there are two terms. If it has three terms, we call it a trinomial, like tricycle, trinomial has three terms. If it has more than three, we generally just say polynomial with however many. So one, two, three, four terms. Or polynomial with, well, one, two, three, four, five terms. And remember, it's just one term we call a monomial. All right. I'm going to erase some of these circles now so we can reference some other stuff. Okay. A polynomial, uh, or excuse me, let me talk about a degree. A degree, a polynomial's degree is determined by the blank degree of its term. Okay. And we can say the greatest degree of its terms. When I look at the terms here, I want to look at the one with the highest power. Okay, so notice I look at my variables. This has a degree four. Okay, that is how we say it, where it's a fourth degree. That type we actually call a quartic. It has a special name. A third degree has a special name of cubic. Notice that's the highest degree of all these. We don't add them up. We don't look at any of the other variables or the, any of the other powers. We just look at the greatest one to classify by degree. Okay, second degree is called a quadratic second degree. Okay. First degree, notice there we don't actually see a variable, that's first degree, it's called linear, and we've actually studied that a lot late uh, this first part of the year. And then if you don't see a variable at all, we just call it a constant, it's a degree zero, degree zero. Okay, now a polynomial is in standard form uh, when the exponents of its terms decrease from left to right. So when I'm looking at these exponents, notice this is 3x to the first, and then there's no other variables. This is an x squared, this is x to a first. This is x cubed, x squared, x to the first. x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and no x's. So 4, 3, 2, 1, kind of 0. 3, 2, 1, 0. 2, 1, 0. 1, 0, and nothing. So when I count down by degree, I put the biggest degree first, that is called standard form. And you usually write all your answers in standard form. The leading coefficient, remember coefficient is the number in front of a variable, so like the coefficient here would be four. The leading coefficient, when in standard form, the coefficient of the first term is called your leading coefficient. So for instance here, the leading coefficient on this one would be 4. So if I say, you know what, let's just make a separate column, LC, leading coefficient would be 4. Leading coefficient would be 2. Leading coefficient would be 3. Leading coefficient would be 5. Leading coefficient, well, there's not even a number, so that means it's 1. All right. Let's see if we can work on classifying some of these things now. Okay, writing a polynomial in standard form and classifying its poly, uh, the polynomial. So write each polynomial in standard form. State its degree, its leading coefficient, and classify the polynomial by the number of terms. So standard form, degree, leading coefficient, and classify it by terms. So looking at this one, f of x equals negative 3x cubed. Okay. There's only one term, so standard form is going to be identical. Once again, I hope you would pause this and try it on your own first. 
The degree, well, the degree is, when in standard form, it's the highest power, so in this case, third. Leading coefficient is the first number in front of our, our variable with the highest degree, so it's negative three. There's only one term, so we call it a monomial. Okay, well, let's look at this one. X to the first, X squared, so we've got to put the X squareds first. So F of X would have to equal negative 7X squared. Notice I bring the negative with it, and that's a positive 3X. Um, its degree would be then 2. That's the first power we come up with. Leading coefficients, negative 7. And it's 1, 2 term, so it's a binomial. All right, notice three different parts here, one, two, and three. Um, X to the fourth goes first, the highest power. It's a positive two X to the fourth. A negative seven X squared goes second, because that's the next highest power, and then the minus nine goes at the end. Think of them as like puzzle pieces you can just move around. Um, the highest degree is four. Leading coefficient is two. And it's one, two, three terms, so a trinomial. All right. And the next one, well, I have a 3x to the fifth, a positive 9x squared, negative 6, four, negative 4x to the fourth, and negative 3x squared. So it looks like 9x to the sixth goes first. Um, after that... I'm going to cross that one out. Negative 4x to the 4th. And, oops, you know what? I missed one there. 3x to the 5th actually goes next. Which means that power should be a positive 3x to the 5th minus 4x to the 4th. Minus 3x squared minus 6. Looks like my leading, or my degree is 6. Leading coefficient is 9. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a polynomial with five terms. All right. Really, there's only one thing left to do today, and that's adding and subtracting these. Okay, so I'm going to look at these. If I'm going to find the sum, really parentheses just kind of hold things together uh, when you're inputting them. So maybe this right here represented the area of something or the amount of something, and this represented another amount, and we just put them in parentheses to say, hey, they're there. Um, this represented B. Okay, but since there's nothing to actually multiply on the outside of the parentheses, like there's not a number sitting right here or right here, we don't distribute anything in. We can kind of just ignore the parentheses. So we could really just rewrite this as 4x to the 4th plus 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 7. And then plus negative 5x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus 4x minus 3. And really that positive plus minus just means minus, so that's what we have. And then we could just put our like pieces together x's to the force. If you're going to add things, you have to add like pieces. Like terms is what we call them. Anything, any variable that's raised to the same power and has the same letter, the same variable, that's a like term. So 4x to the fourth and negative 5x to the fourth. You're counting x's to the force. x to the fourth. So you have 5 or 4 minus 5, and that is negative 1, x to the fourth. And we just write that as negative x to the fourth x to the third. I have three x's to the thirds and negative two x's to the third. How many x's to the thirds are there? Well, there's three minus two, or positive one x to the third. And once again, we don't show the one. I have negative two x squared. And no x squareds over here, so I just have minus two x squared. I have negative x and positive 4x. So when I'm looking at my x's, I have negative 1 and 4, which is positive 3x. Then I have 7 minus 3, which is positive 4. You'll notice I use different shapes there, and that helps students out sometimes. 
Uh, some students are really successful using the shapes there. And notice if you start with the highest power, you're always in standard form if you go in order by power. There you've got it. Okay, well, let's try another one here. This one's different. So notice, once again, I have parentheses. Now, this time, the parentheses matter, right? Because up here, I just had a 1, and I guess I could have distributed a 1 in. But it didn't change anything, right? It didn't make anything different. So, like, when I bring it in, nothing changes. So it would just be a waste of time. But here, I had actually a negative 1 sitting there. When I distribute a negative in, it changes every one of those signs. In negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. Negative 1 times negative 4 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So rather than distributing it in like that, a lot of times what we do is we just say we're going to add the opposite. We're just going to make that a big plus symbol right here and switch all these signs. And notice it's just like distributing that negative 1. And then you can kind of ignore the parentheses and move on with like, right? You have your x's to the fourth. You have 3x to the fourth and 7x to the fourth. How many x to the fourth? Well, that's 3 plus 7 or 10. You have negative 2x cubed and negative 4x cubed. Well, how many x cubes is that? Well, that's negative 2 minus 4 or negative 6x cubed. You have negative x squared, 1x squared, and positive 2x squared. Well, how many x squared? Well, that's negative 1 plus 2, or positive 1x squared. And we don't show the 1. And we have negative 4x and negative 9x. How many x's? Well, negative 4 minus 9 is negative 13x. And then we have the 9 and the 1, which is plus 10 in standard form, so we are good to go. I think that's it. Yep, all right, good luck.